the arts, the STEM world, the design world, the engineering world, we know that there's not as much uh, representation of people of color or women or trans folk um, as we'd like to see. Diversity is at the base of uh, any kind of project. You have always to think outside of yourself, uh, so try to think in a different way. Hi, my name is Abidemi Hope. I am the principal of this lovely Oasis Public School 11. This is our third year with the project pipeline in ensuring that we give kids an opportunity to explore different career fields at a young age. My name is Ibrahim. I'm the president of NICOBA, the New York Coalition of Black Architects. This is the first time since we've been here that we've had almost 80 students. That's an incredible accomplishment. We had about 20, maybe 25 professionals who showed up, and they had an amazing time coaching, teaching, immersing the children in you know, the various nuances of architecture. My name is Kimberly Murphy, and I'm a parent at PS11. I'm on the executive board of the PTA, and I'm the parent liaison to this program. Hello, my name is Desiree Gordon, and I am, among many other things, the mother of Ishara Gordon Bethel, who is a third grade student at PS11. Hi, my name is Chiara. I'm a parent at PS11, and I'm an architect. Before I do anything to talk about improvement, I tend to do more observations and talk to my parents. So my parents are at the helm of this. So based on parents that are already in the architectural field, one of the things I've asked them to do is to volunteer their time and you'll see them being present. So I would ask Kimberly from her perspective, from her expert knowledge, where else can we bolster this particular program? What else can we bring in? PS11 has a very robust academic program, but we can't do everything in a day. So the beauty of Project Pipeline is that it's bringing another application for science, art, math, even social sciences to um, a practical application for our students. Um, so that's really the main benefit. And not only that, it's exposing students to a profession that they may have otherwise not had any exposure to. Seeding the young people with a sense of agency in these sectors uh, at this time uh, bodes well for us being able to have a, a, a different level of inclusivity and participation from all kinds of people tomorrow. Everything we do today for them is for tomorrow. My name is Kafana Hinkson. I'm a parent here at PS11. It was important for me to sign him up for this program because I thought it was a great opportunity for him to be exposed to it and the fact that it was minority architects and um, a program offered at his school, like I jumped at it, I raced in with the permission slip and release forms like he's doing this and we told him you're doing this from 10 to 3 on Saturday and he was willing, he was very willing. Hello, I'm Charlita, I'm the chair of the education committee for Nicoba Noma. I think this year was a start of taking it to the next level because we've been doing these projects in their neighborhood, talking around it, but this is the first year they actually got to go outside and explore, and that's what we do as designers. So I think that's one part of taking it to the next level, doing neighborhood walks, doing tours of beautiful architecture, museums. We have so many amazing resources in New York, why not use them? I think that's a huge way that we could take it to the next level for Project Pipeline to go to these sites and study them. So we took the kids for a walk, only uh, two blocks. We had to talk about brownstone and try to show them what the elements of a brownstone are. We are in the only block of Brooklyn that has a lot of brick. I know, there's no brownstone. Let's walk at the corner. Let's walk and find a brownstone. And so we let them look at the building, look at the material and tell us what they saw in the neighborhood. My name is Joel Patterson. I'm a volunteer for the Project Pipeline. 
think it brings a level of context for the kids because a lot of times when you're talking about plan elevation the section when you're using paper and just visual representation inside of a control environment they get it but it's not as well as if they can see a building they see the windows they see the fenestrations the moldings and they can actually point to something and touch it and feel the brownstone and feel the the texture it was very helpful for the kids to really identify those in real time look at the top of the building what is missing from oh, this oh, building oh, oh, on it. that is fantastic every student that we talk to it's their world changes you know in that moment so the first camp that was 60 students that we impacted. The next time it's 120, and then they're telling their friends and their brothers. So I think the whole community has changed as a result of us having these conversations with students. I definitely see the arts. I definitely see um, the math component. I definitely see the design thinking that's required. My name is Dash. I'm seven years old. My class is Ms. Landis' class, and my school is PS11. I would like to add something in the, um, when we were drawing, I would like to add other things that would be in the neighborhood, like a train station, a supermarket, fast food, or restaurants. And that's it. I would like to add all, all of those things. What was interesting is once you told them how to, how to critique a building or opened up their eyes to the different architectural elements, they use that language and that's how they talk to us. I think that was one of the big takeaways that once you give the children the vocabulary, they take it and run. Hi, my name is Ashara Gordon Bethel. I'm in, I'm in third grade and I go to PS11. And I think architecture can change the world by people thinking that they could build stuff with their imagination. In my observation, so far, I think it's doing what it's supposed to do. Right now, the program is in a good space because it does, it is exposing kids at a young age to the design profession. I think in a way of increasing the, the, the presence of the camp, it'll be nicer to have a, a consistent involvement of the volunteers in the camp, so not just like one weekend, but have maybe a series of weekends that are either consecutive, where the kids can really dive into a project. It's fascinating. The students who have participated in multiple years have started identifying themselves as future architects. So it's wonderful to see them really grab on to the language, the process, the the whole concept of architecture. So it's really fascinating to see these little guys really identify as architects and future architects. All in all, I'm very, very happy, very pleased for Kimberly, who took a lot of time, I'm sure, to organize this effort, Principal Hope, who's opened her school to us again for the third time, and to the professionals who, you know, donated their Saturday to help all of these young boys and girls. So thank you.